Hello. How are you? Good. Um, good to see you. Uh, today we shall be looking at section uh, 3.1. And uh, section 3.1 talks about, um, I mean, at the end of the day, students will be able to understand numbers, their origin and their representation in numerals and models, okay? And different enumeration systems, including the Hindu Arabic system and place value and counting in basis 10 and other basis. Um, later on, I, 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 was, I will do a video just on number basis, but uh, let's go through uh, this section, the numeration system. All right. So um, numerals are written symbols to represent cardinal numbers. And these are the different um, numerals. So we have the Babylonian, Egyptian, Mayan, Greek, Roman, Hindu, Arabic, and Hindu Arabic. OK. So um, really, um, I won't uh, test you on this, but you may find some of these in your assignment. Um, what I will emphasize on is the Roman numerals, okay? We shall be looking at, for the Roman numerals, maybe uh, I will emphasize that, but for the remaining, you just have to familiarize yourself with these, okay? So, um, yes. So, for instance, uh, so when we talk about the numeration system, it's a collection of properties and symbols agreed upon to represent numbers systematically. Is that okay? Nice. Now we have what we call the tally numeration system, uses single strokes to represent each object that is counted. And usually this is used in statistics a lot. You do tally. So you do one stroke, two stroke, three strokes, four. And then the last one go, goes through as that. So this makes five. So we have five, five, and three. So together we have 13 right here. Okay, nice. Now, uh, so uh, these are symbols, Egyptian numeral symbols, and this is the description, vertical staff, and that is equivalent to one. And you have that heel bone, that is equivalent to 110, sorry, it's equivalent to a 10, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these are the symbols, these symbols are used in Egypt, Egyptian, the Egyptian numeration system to represent numbers. Okay, then we have the Babylonian um, system, okay, that represents one, and then that represents what, 10, okay? And then the Mayan, and uh, these are the, the representations for the Mayan numeral and Hindu Arabic equivalent, okay? Nice, they look funny, right? <laughs> All right. Now here, I think uh, you may be familiar with this Roman numeral and then Hindu Arabic equivalent. So I is one, V, five, X, 10, L, 50, um, C, 100. And, and these follow some specific um, um, order, especially if you have to know whether you have to subtract or you have to add. So if you look at what we have here, the Roman numeral and then the Hindu Arabic, Anytime a little number, so I, a little number comes before a bigger um, number or a little letter comes before a bigger letter, you subtract. So IV means that I have to do, and V stands for five. So I will do five minus one, and that is four. Okay, I have IX, that means that I have to take one from 10. Okay, XL. That means I need to take 10 from what 50. X, C. Okay, when a bigger letter comes before, a smaller letter comes before a bigger letter, what you have to do is you have to subtract. On the flip side, you add. Okay, so if we had VI will give you 6, XI will give you 11, LX will give you 60. Okay, and so on and so forth. So if a smaller letter comes before a bigger one, you subtract. And if a, a, a little letter comes after a bigger letter, you add. Okay, nice. So that is how that works. Now, all numerals are constructed from the 10 digits. So we have zero uh, up to nine. And then place value is based 
on powers of 10, the number-based system, okay? So we will be looking at what, uh, what, what place value is. So if, uh, when I talk about place value, basically, so if I, if I write three, okay, three, two, four, two, so this is 3,242, right? I can break this down into that. So if I want to break that down, that's 3,000. And then I have 200. And then I have 40. And I have two. If I put all these together, I will still get 3,402. Now, when I ask you, what is the place value of three? This is 3,000. So you say 3,000. So the place value of three is 1,000. The place value of two is 200. So this is hundreds. Hundreds. And the place value of four is what? Is 10. It's a 10. So we have tens. And uh, two is ones. We call it the ones or unit. Okay, so this is basically what we call uh, place values. Okay, let's go ahead. So basically, that's what we have. So we have 5,670. So five is in thousands, six is in hundreds, ten, uh, seven tens, and eight units. Okay, and that can be expanded as that. Nice. So really, uh, if A is any number and A is any natural number, then A to the N means that A times itself N times, okay? So what this means is that if I have A to the third, this means that this is A times A. Okay, sorry. A to the third means A times A times what? A. Is that okay? This is not the same as 3a. So for instance, if I have two to the four, this means two times this of four times. And this is 16. Okay, this is not eight. I've seen students do four by two and that is equal to eight, which is not true. All right, and um, we know that any number to the power zero is one except zero. Zero to the zero will be zero but any number to the power zero is one, all right? And that is what we have right there. So we're going to use this in our subsequent dis uh, discussions. Now, base 10 blocks. Now, one long is equal to 10. So one long is 10 units, okay? And uh, that is what we have here. And one flat, so a flat is what? A flat is 100 units, okay? And one block is 1,000 units. Is that okay? So basically, and then we have that as a unit. All right, nice. Now we are going to use this to do some additions. So trade 11 flats, 17 longs, and 16 units to obtain the fewest blocks possible, okay? So we have 11 flats, 17 longs and six, 16 units. So what, we, what do we do here? We realize that out of this 16 units, we can have one long and six units. So we break that down. So that's why we, we cross that out and we have one long and 16, six units. Now we put everything together and we have 11 flats, um, 18 longs and six units. Is this okay? Good, so within the unit, we could break that the unit into a long and unit as well. Okay, nice. Now, same here. So we have 11 flats, 18 longs. Now, 18 longs, we can have a flat, okay, and uh, eight longs. Is that right? So then um, we put everything together and finally we have uh, 12 flats, okay eight longs and uh, six units, is that right? Nice, 
and everything, um, all these are coming from the, the table, the representation. So you should know how many um, units make a long, okay? And uh, how many units make a flat and how many units make a block. Is that right? And uh, you can uh, put these together, rearrange them and add them appropriately as needed, okay? Nice. Now here we have one hand system, okay? Base five symbol and base five blocks. Okay, like I said, I'll, I'll do just a special video, a separate video on number bases, but I'm, I'll, I'll introduce you to number bases um, in this section. So zero fingers means zero base five. One finger is um, one base five. Now one base five means that I will do one times five, okay? And this is to the zero, okay? So at the end of the day, uh, I'll have one times one, which is one. That's why I have one here, okay? Two fingers, this is two base five. If you wanna change base five to base 10, all right? This is what you do, okay? And then you have two, okay? Three fingers, this is three, by five and that is a zero so i have three three units and so on and so forth all right so basically um that is what we are doing right here but let me come to um, these double numbers here so for instance i have 12 one two base five one two base five if i want to change that to a bridge 10 i'll do one by five plus two by five and I have zero and I have one. So this is five plus what? Plus two. So this is seven. So that's why I have, uh, we have seven right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. But I will expose you to number basis generally. Now, we want to convert one, one, two, four, four, base five to base 10. Okay. So we are looking at number bases and how do you change from a base, okay, to a base 10. Now base 10 is also referred to as a decimal numeral. All right. So when you're asked to change a number to a decimal numeral, it's the same as changing to base 10, base 10. Okay. Nice. The small numeral is the same as base 10. Okay, so here, if you have to change from a base to a base 10, what you do is that, so I have one, one, two, four, four, base five. I have to change to a base 10. Now to change to a base 10, what I do is, <clears throat> I will take any, all these so i'll do one times five so the first number times the base i'll take each of these numbers multiply by the base which is base five plus i'll take two and multiply by the base plus i'll take four and multiply by the base and finally, I will take the last number four by the base. Okay, so I have zero, one. Okay, so when you're done, you introduce powers. And these powers, you have to start from zero, and the base takes the powers, and two, three, and four. Okay, so this takes four. So basically that's what you see on the table right above. Okay, that's what you see on the table here. Now let's break this down. So now four times five to the zero. Five to the zero is what? It's one plus I have four uh, times five to the one and five to the one, I'll, I'll maintain that. Five to the one is what? is five okay and then i have two times two to the second two to the second is 25. okay 
and then I have one times five to the third. Five to the third. What is five to the third? So five to the third is 125 plus, okay, I have one times five to the four. Five to the four is 625, okay. Now what I do, I'll put all these together. So I have 625 plus 125 plus uh, 50 plus 20 plus four, okay. So you have 625 plus 125 plus 50 plus uh, 24 basically and that gives you 824 and that is how you change a number to a base 10 or you change a number from any base to a base 10. I'm going to be looking at multiple examples of this okay so that is how you change to a base 10. So a base 10 is a natural numeral right so the natural natural numbers every natural number is in base 10 okay so if i say two i'm counting one two three for instance one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all these numbers are in base 10 that is the natural form of a number okay but a base five is a different form of a number and it's possible to change from um a different base to a natural number and we shall look at the reverse okay so that is our answer and basically that is how we came by that okay right. now when we talk about a binary system only two digits and that is base two base two is especially important because of its use in computers so binary um uh, system is used a lot in computer programming, in electrical signals, and what have you. So here we have a base two, and uh, we have to change to a base 10. And that is how you go about doing that. So just like we did, for, uh, changing from base five to base 10, what you do is you take each of these numbers, okay? So you take that and multiply, you take one, and multiply by the base, which is two. So one times two gives you that plus, and then I have zero times two, okay? One times another two, and then one times two, and then one times two, all right? So let me do this too as well. But when you are done doing this, what you have to do is the number, uh, the last number takes a power of zero, followed by one, a power of one, and uh, and the next one, uh, this should actually take a power of two, okay? And then three and four. So that should take a power of two, okay? That is why we have uh, four right there, is that okay? And together everything gives you 23. So one, zero, one, 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 base two, is 23 base 10 or is 23 is that okay nice now we will now here for this example we have a base 10 numeral and we want to change to base 2 so when you have so so far the two examples we looked at were in different bases and we had to change to base 10 but this time we have a base 10 numeral and we have to change to a base 2 now that demands a different approach and this is how you do it okay so let's see how you can do that so now if you have to do that do two and do 27 that is how you change to uh, base two so we're going to use two to divide that now how many times um, can two divide 27 so two goes into two one and then two goes into 
um, seven how many times? Three times, and the remainder is what? One, okay? So that's how you go about it. And then you use two again. Now, because two can still divide 13, you go ahead and use two to divide 13. Now, how many times can two divide 13? That is six times, and it will leave a remainder of what? One. Two can still divide six, so we bring two. How many times can two divide uh, six? Is three times, and it leaves a remainder of zero, okay? Two can still divide three. How many times can two divide that? Two will go into three once, and it will leave the remainder of one, okay? Now, at this point, this is where you conclude, and uh, make sure you do not get confused at this point. Now, two, you say that two goes into one is zero. You say two cannot divide um, one, and then it leaves a remainder of this number of one. Okay, this conclusion part, um, students always struggle. So make sure, so finally, when you get here, okay, when the number here is less than that, it's less than the number you're using to divide, you introduce a zero, you say it cannot divide, so you introduce a zero, and this becomes your final remainder right there. Now, when you are done, this becomes your answer. And you have to write your answer in this order. So you say that uh, 27 is equal to one, one, zero, one, one, base two. And that is your answer, okay? So that is how you go about this. Gucci? Does it make sense? Okay, good. All right, so this is two different approaches to doing that. And uh, now we have what we call the geodesmal system, the 12 digit. Now, um, we are going to use T, what stands for 10, E, what stands for 11, okay? The base 12 digits are um, between zero to what? 11. Now the good, the what you have to note is that when we are talking about a base two, you cannot have two in a base two digit. If you are talking about a base three, you cannot have three in a base three digit, okay? And we will look at that again one more time. So when you see E in number bases, that represents 11. And when you see T, T represents what? 10, is that okay? So we have E2, T12, 2 base 10. So E2, T12, 2 base 10. And that's how you change to a base 10. So first, uh, E stands for 11 times 12 plus 2 times 12 plus 10 times 12. Do you see that? So this is your T and that is your E right there. So now this takes a power of zero and that takes a power of what, one? And let me get rid of that so that you don't get confused. And that takes a power of that. Okay, so what do you have? So now let's start from here. This is 10 times one, right? And then I have two by 12. Okay. And then 12 squared is 144. So I have 11 by 144. Is that okay? 11 by 144, this is 15, 
eight four plus two times twelve is twenty four. My pen keeps striking out the numbers plus ten. Now you put these together and you have one six one eight. That's your final answer. Okay, and that is it. Okay, so that's how you change from, and we dealt with that a base, but you just have to know that E stands for 12, T stands for 10, and that is 1618. Okay, nice. Now we want to convert, um, we want to convert one, two, seven, seven, two base 12. Okay. One, two, seven, seven. We want to change that to a base 12. Okay. Now uh, that is also pretty simple. And uh, we are going to do now, because we have to change to a base 12, we have to use 12 to divide one, two, seven, seven. Is that okay? So you do, um, how many 12s can you find in one, two, seven, seven? Or how many times can 12 divide one, two, seven, seven? That is 106 times. And it will leave a remainder of five. So if you have your calc, just do um, one, two, two, one, two, seven, seven divided by 12. So do one, two, one, two, seven, seven divided by 12. Okay, you get 106.4 something. Okay, but just take the whole number. Okay, just stick to the whole number, which is 106, and multiply 106 by 12. So do 106 times 12, and that is, one two seven two so one two seven two okay and um it leaves a remainder of what five okay nice so i'll then do this again so 12 can still divide 106 and 12 goes into 106 eight times okay again do 106 divided by 12 which is eight point something, but just take the whole number. Okay, so now just do eight by 12 and you realize that that is 96. Okay, so 96, but you want 106. So this will leave a remainder of what, 10. But don't forget that 10 is represented in number basis as what, T. So this should leave a remainder of 10, but because we call 10 a T, we will prefer to use a T than to call it a 10, okay? So that is T, I'll put two in, um, on top of it. So 10 is a T. So now let me even get rid of it. So that is remainder 10 and that is T, okay? Now, um, now you can do that again, right? So 12, 12, 12 goes into um, eight, it's uh, zero times, okay? And the remainder is what, eight, okay? So now you have to write your answer. So this will be your answer, but you go this way, okay? So one, two, two, why do I keep saying one, two, two? One, two, seven, seven is equal to 8t5 base 12. And that is your answer. Okay. Gucci, okay. So when I say Gucci it means, is, is everything good? All right, so that is how you do this. Now here, uh, we wanna look at Rob used base 12 to write the following. Now, what is the value of G? So you can use this. 
like we just did, you can go through this to find the value of your G, right? So here, this is in base 12 and this is in base 10. So we will maintain the base 10, but we have to change. We have to harmonize the basis, right? By harmonize the ba harmonizing the basis, what you mean, what this means is that you have to make sure they have the same base before you can do the operation. And working with base 10 is easier. So we are going to change from base 12 to a base 10. And this is how you, you do it. But what you know, G multiply, this is not nine. So that is G by 12, okay? Plus three by 12 plus six by 12, okay? And don't forget zero, one, and two. And because 1050 is already a base 10, you do not change that to any base, you keep that, okay? Are you good up to this point? All right. Now, 12 squared times G gives you 144 G plus three by 12, okay? Three times 12 gives you 36 plus six times 10 to the z 12 to the zero. 12 to the zero, every number to the zero is what is one. So I have six right there. So I have 10, 50. Is that okay? Now let's add these. So this is 144G plus 36 plus six is 42. Okay, and I have 10, 50. Okay, now I can group like terms. So of 1050 minus 42, right? And that is 1008. Now I want G, so I'll divide both sides by 144. And my G is, that is seven. Okay, that is seven right there. So really, uh, I found the value of my G. So re uh, what it, this meant is that I, the value, that value should have been seven, three, six, base 12 is equal to 1050. Okay, and that is what we just found. Okay, nice. So this was RG basically, and we have found that successfully, okay? Uh, all right, so thank you very much for your time. And uh, let me know if you have questions on this piece of video, okay? And uh, I am going to work on number basis. Uh, in a separate video because we'll be looking at number bases, um, at least for section number three, we're looking at um, a lot of number bases problems, okay? So uh, we shall look, I'll look at that and do another video on number bases. But um, so, so basically we've looked at the, the various numeration systems and we have looked at how you can change from a base, a different base to a base 10 and vice versa, and changing from a base 10 to a different base, okay? And uh, we have said that E represents 11, right? And T represents 10. So make sure um, you, you going through these steps and do some more practice, practice more, and um, everything is going to be good, all right? So I'll see you again, and thank you. Bye-bye.